Yeah, good evening. Opening the start to vegan opening the Board of Health on October 2nd, 2024. Uh, roll call. Patrick Tropiano here. Jillian Morton here. Uh, so Lawrence Perry may be coming in late. Uh, he had another meeting and some conflict. And I believe Dr. Uh, Dory is coming, but will be a few minutes late also. Um, okay. Uh, number one is a discussion and possible vote on Sienna Silver Body Art Practitioner Permit. Hi, um, who is Sienna Silver? She is working with <coughs> Dust Till Dawn. I don't see her or Liz present. Or here? So maybe we'll just postpone this one for now. Um, and then discussion and possible vote on the Grey Witches Gallery and Tattoo Sink Variants request. Um, and this is probably with Jess. Hi, everybody. Jess Braley on the Great Witches on Main Street. Thank you, and uh, you. I brought packets for everybody. Thank you. And oh, Sam, so I'm uh, and Dr. Dory is arriving. Um, Sam, do you have any comments to, I think we have these in our packages. No, these are mine. Oh, these are new. Yeah, these Sorry. are additional information. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. You, so I'll take a minute or so to read. Do you have any comments before she presents? Or yep. would you like to? So I personally went out and met Jess at her shop, and she showed me kind of what she was looking to do. They have an event coming up uh, next weekend, I believe. Yes, 11th, 11th to the 12th and 13th. Yep. Yep. So they get extremely busy. So they're, we're hoping to have another booth. So it doesn't, this booth for tattooing, technically does not have a hand sink, but since they are a disposable one use type of shop, everything gets thrown away. So that janitorial sink isn't usually used. So she did put a picture in here. If you wanted to look at exactly what I'm kind of talking about. Is this a temporary sink? No, it's no, not a regular it's, utility sink. It's a sink, so it's in there. But so it would be just for this shop, just for this event, mm -hmm. for now. She does yeah, plan to add some sinks. Yeah, we're planning on putting in uh, regular standing sinks. We just haven't had That's time. These events have gotten sense. so popular so quickly. That so I... So this would be a temporary sink? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, no. So the, the sink is The sink is there. But we'd need a variance because we don't have a technical hand wash sink. It's our utility sink. We just need to name it something else. So I'm seeing Basically. on there, they have a picture here on... Um, the second page of what we got from on um, uh, with our yep, papers today, yep. and it shows uh, three regular sinks that they have, and then they have a sink in the bathroom, and then the utility yep. sink. Utility sink is the fourth sink from the top. It doesn't say sink. It doesn't it sink, but it's blue, window. so right, okay, which is right next to this one here. Mm -hmm. so there are three sinks. Mm -hmm. So if I. Like a wall, then a fourth. So would you? Did you have anything more to say, Sam? On? I think it appears feasible for this event. Yeah, they for really three days. For the three days, they really only use it for like hand washing. Everything mm -hmm. else is disposable. Yeah, that's. I gave Sam a demonstration. Usually during this, four reasons all together that I think we can meet the same level of pathogen transmission and uh, the same level of hand washing as if we had hand wash sinks for everybody. Mm -hmm. During events, we don't use rinse cups, and we do, we use something called rinse cup solidifier. Uh, so we solidify all of our liquids, and they're then thrown into bio trash as opposed to being dumped out of sink. So you wouldn't have people walking through other stations with biohazardous water or ink or anything like that. They automatically, per our exposure control report, uh, as soon as they're done in their booths, they take their gloves off and then have to sterilize their hands with hand sanitizer before they touch the knobs to their sink or door or anything else. So they do that and then go wash their hands. So it's like a double level of, of cleaning. Also during these events, like a, like a convention, nobody's finishing at the same time. So you wouldn't have people queuing up to use the same sink. You'd have people using it at different times as their tattoos finished. How many artists? We have, so normally during normal work hours, we have, I work full time, and then we have two part time artists and a part time piercer. So under normal hours, we don't even, we could probably get away with two sinks most days. Um, during the event, we have um, our three regular tattoo artists. Our piercer is the only there one day full time. Uh, and then we're hoping to have two other guest artists come in. So at one, Time potentially, you could have five people. Yes. Yep. 
with three regular sinks three regular sinks and the it, and the other mm -hmm. sink that could be opened up and then we do have a bathroom sink and we have a kitchen sink and a shared sink in the bathroom in the back but i don't but that's count separate those program. separate yeah um so you'd have four sinks that could be used for potential five artists mm -hmm. for a three-day period of for a three-day period of mm -hmm. time i went into their last event just to mm -hmm. check it out and mm -hmm. i do think the way it all works they wouldn't all be at the hand sink at the same time. Yeah. So I think it is feasible for the event, but. Okay. It yeah. sounds, yeah, I mean, it sounds reasonable to me right. for, for a three-day event. Yeah, um, and you can see by the pictures, I think one booth is two feet away uh, from that utility sink. Another booth is about five feet away. And then the last booth would be 10 feet from two different sinks. Mm -hmm. Actually, three sinks. If you so let me ask you a question now. Sure. The temporary sink. I mean, the sink you're putting up. That's that's. It's already there. It's already there. You're putting up a no, sink. No, it's already there. It's already so there. So there, there, there are three sinks, and there's a, there's the fourth sink is right here, and it's supposed to be used. It's supposed for to be a utility, a, a utility sink utility for a shop that it. did. Um, if you scrub tubes, biohazardous tubes, or stuff like that, but we're a disposable only shop, so we don't use the sink for anything. Okay, so you're going to use a. A permanent sink. Mm -hmm. Yes. For an event. Yeah, for washing hands. Yeah, for well, an event. I don't have a problem if it's a permanent sink. Yep. Yep. It's a permanent I, I just uh, I know that they, they there's been some talk <laughs> about using these. The no, this is a, no. yeah permanent it's sink there. hooked into our septic, hooked and into I, our water. And I just can't. I just I just don't understand those things, and I don't want. Yeah, this is makes a, sense if you mm -hmm. have a booth, if you have a tent opening up Correct. somewhere um, yeah. for a weekend for and doing an event yeah. or medical event. They yeah, make sense sure, for but that. But not for, you know, well, Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. If you were going to use that and use a temporary, that's one thing. But you're saying you actually have the sink. Oh, yeah, we have a utility yeah. sink. It's we already have... installed. Oh, yeah. And you're going to use it as a wash sink. Yep. Correct. For, yes. a a wash hand for, sink. for an event. Yep. Yeah, I, that's fine. There's no problem with that. I, no, as far as I'm concerned. Any questions? I would. I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve um, the variance as requested for the Grey Witches Gallery. Second. And uh, roll call vote. Jillian Morton, yes. Pat Piano, yes. And Amy Piggins. Thank you very much. You know, good luck. I don't think. I think I'm the next two people too. Yep. Unless we. Yep. We can do that. Sienna Something. is here, but if you want to go out of order, it's up to you. What? I can pop back. I mean, I'm You're here, here later anyway. anyway. Okay, okay. So discussion and possible vote on Sienna Silver Body Art Practitioner Permit. Hi there. Hi. How are you? Very good. Would you like to present who you are and what you're here for? My name is Sienna Seiler. I'm here to um, hopefully get approved. Um, I'm from the area. I'm a welder. Um, And you have, I think you went through all of her paperwork. She, it's all there. And right, she and has everything. been watching um, Liz for a couple months, right? Yeah. Not doing right. anything, just watching Liz. So Yeah, just watching. So you, she has been seeing it. She's been there, and all her paperwork is accurate. Is Liz here? Is she on? Is Liz, no. I, don't, I haven't seen her. Is Liz present? No. Is she planning on coming? I asked her. She said she didn't need to. She didn't know she needed to. Oh. Well, you would think that would be pretty important to have the person who you're training, you're going to be training with, to be here and saying that they really are going to be training, I would think. I talked to her. I don't know. I'd, she, I assume she would be here, but... Usually they are, because it's usually it's under their license, and... Um, she was aware of it. Um, I generally would have... I would think that whoever's going to be training you should be in your support and be here to support you and tell us uh, more about it. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way or? Yeah, I mean, because we have had violations where she mm -hmm. wasn't pres present, that's why I'm particularly being harder on this one. So I, I, maybe she can call in. Do you think you, you could yeah, try to call her? Of course. Or we'll do the other ones and then, yeah. That would, at least that would be oh, helpful. Uh, yeah, or she comes. Outside? Yeah, yeah please. I don't want and you to be penalized for Yeah, I'm that. so sorry. I don't no, it's know. not your fault. No. Nope. So maybe, um, Sam, in the future, we then make that as we're recording. So I should call her the day of and remind her to come in. I told her last week it was today. 
she didn't she show sh- up. No, she right. knows that I'm here. I I, yeah. talk, I just said bye to her, but she didn't or know just, uh, to come. Yeah, just give her a call, and then we can, we can hopefully get her, and okay. then we can link her in. Okay, we Thank can go you. on to the next one. Okay. Yes. Um, discussion and possible vote on James Mello body art petitioner permit. Oh. <laughs> so that's me again. Both James and Nathan are uh, me. Um, James has known me bef- since before I was even a tattoo artist. Uh, he was one of the people I tattooed when I was an apprentice. Um, he, when we originally started talking about opening a shop in Wareham, he went and took a skin course. Um, he works at a shop that Nathan owns down in North Carolina, uh, luckily in Fayetteville, and they're outside of the damage area right now, thank God. Um, but they're coming up to help uh, with our tattoo weekend um, and work for us for those days. Uh, Basically, I licensed, I chose to license them as full artists because they both took their skin course. They both have everything else uh, instead of trying to license them as guest artists because we do a couple events a year or three a year. It'd be more, it'd be more than a temporary license. But they have all of their requirements from mass. They both took skin courses. I think Nathan took his like last week. And then CPR first paid by both bloodborne pathogens. Until there. As yeah. long as they also have extra, like, other permits from other towns in here as well. Mm-hmm. How long have they been, or oh, let's take one other time. How long has James been tattooing? Uh, he's been a piercer for five years, and he's been tattooing for three. Uh, Nathan's been a piercer for over a decade, and he's been tattooing for at least as long. Down in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And they've been up with you before for other events? They, they have not worked with me at this shop before. Um, Jimmy has come up and worked at other shops that I've worked at, both in Plymouth and in uh, West Bridgewater. So you know them both? Yeah. Hold on. Paperwork is here on James, anyway. anyway. He's had a lot of, few years of experience now. Mm-hmm. Anyone have any questions on James? I'll start with James yeah. Mellon. I'll make a motion to um, approve James Mello as a body art practitioner given the permit. And a second. And roll we'll call vote. Jillian Morton, yes. Yeah, yes. And Amy Beacon, yes. Okay. And then uh, next is um, Nathan Paul Body Art Practitioner Permit. And I think that's the paperwork is all also here. Um, Is, is he at the same shop? He's shop the owner is? of the shop down there. He's the owner and then yeah. okay. And Jimmy's his piercer and a tattoo artist. Okay. He learned under <laughs> <laughs> came together. Okay. Um I make a motion to approve Nathan Paul as body art practitioner. Second. And we'll call vote. Jillian Morton, yes. Jillian Morton, yes. And Amy if you can. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, um, do we want to, were you able to get, go back? She's on the way. Oh, she's coming. Okay, cool. Um, so, do the other stuff? Yeah, there's really not much. Why don't we do a discussion of partial, uh, um, piercing and tattooing regulations, basically, which we've been going over. Before the other is mm-hmm. there's not a lot new from last week. Yeah. Yeah, there was some homework to be done. Uh, okay. Yes, and and um, so there's there's a lot. I think um, I don't know if anyone had a chance. I know it's only been a week. Um, looking at our old and, and and new, you guys did not put anything else together between the week. No. Um, so I think one was looking at my thought was one looking at the what Larry gave us, and is there anything out of that that we'd like to pull forward into our own yeah. about these 35 pages or however, 34 pages um, that he had seen, um, somebody he knew had these um, regs, and 
I thought it might be good to just take out of it. They're very long and not all of them are appropriate. Do we have a cap on um, apprentices, the number of apprentices per shop? I think yes. we discussed at we, one point one we're per one to one. Yes, it was. I think we need to. That was one thing we had discussed a couple weeks ago that, um, uh, so it would, uh, old regs say the body act shall not have more than two active right. apprentices, but that depends on you know how many master artists, master's you artists you have. Right. So, so one you, to one. So, so is it one to one, which I think we talked about last, which makes sense to me. Um, you know, if it's a really big shop and you've yeah, got four, not, yeah. why wouldn't you have four apprentices? Yeah. So changing it for the amount of apprentices as you have bought as artists. Yeah, I think uh, if I remember correctly, Patrick was supposed to do some work on this and we don't have it today. So I don't know that we can do a lot with this until we hear from Patrick. Right. But we can sort of go through the, the basics of, of what everyone, if there's any major problems that, I think the other thing we talked about last with the informed consent one is, is how many apprentices can you have per shop? Is it one per apprentice? I mean, one I think they put in there, a master practitioner shall have uh, no more than one active apprentice. Right. That makes sense to me. Do we have records of that? Who would be like the masters? What did you say? Do we have records? How would we know? Under our, like, like we just approved two essentially masters, right? So yeah, they'd be all in our. Would be, but. We have all the permits. Is that what you mean? Yeah. How would you know it's one to one? You just have to keep track of that. Yeah, we would just we just keep track. We have them all in an Excel Excel spreadsheet. Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Especially if they go through town apprenticeships. Yep. So maybe we yeah. just motion to um, continue. Because... Yeah, one, other... Oh, yeah, one, one other question yeah. I have while we're all on the subject is the informed consent. Mm -hmm. You that brought that up I last did. time. Um, yeah. Whether we pull forward, we don't have anything like that, what we would want. and um... We have a standard of practice where it talks about an informed consent. Um, I just, I liked how it was in the, uh, it was really clear. Let's see it again. Um, Here it is, it's on page 15. Part yeah, seven. Can be just a sample and informed consent that shops mm -hmm. can use. And I do think, too, like getting a process where whether it's on like a iPad or something, and then people are like initialing, and then you have it automatically get sent to them, like DocuSigned, and then you have it in your records, it just streamlines it. Sort of what they do in the OR. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or pre OR uh, checklist, yeah. which sort of makes sense. Yeah. What were you, your thoughts on the informed consent that they uh, had? Our today? informed consent's two pages long. So it's similar oh, yeah. to this oh, one yeah. here. Yeah. If not more extensive than, yeah. oh yeah, for sure. It certainly protects, I don't it protects any, you folks. Yeah, that's, and it's a requirement, it's a requirement for my insurance and on my lease, I think, so. But certainly of my liability insurance. And we You know what they turn on consent as well. Um, well, I was looking at page 9 out of 16, talking about standards of practice, and it's just health history and, and clients informed consent, and then a client can not really super comprehensive, mm -hmm. you know? So maybe we add to that the standard under standards of practice. Um, okay. 
than any other. Did anyone else have anything from the um, what Mr. Perry had brought forward, the body art model code? That they thought needed to be added. I don't know if you made a comment. I haven't looked at it yet. It's only been a week. Did you Did, have any comments particularly? No, just the ear piercing guns, which we had talked about mm -hmm. yesterday, and uh, last week rather. And uh, the other thing was eyeball tattooing and adding that as a restriction. But those are the only two things. And I even went through a horrific Google search to try to find other stuff. And that's really all I came up with that <laughs> seems to be relevant. No, we talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. Everything else seems to be covered. Okay. Do you know from our regulations if it talks about anything if you're pregnant or not? I'm just curious because I'm reading these. I don't think it prohibits you from piercing pregnant. Do you know? I don't. I don't. That informed consent in here talks about it. Have you been pregnant or are you? I think that probably should. Again, I know ours. I know ours does. Yeah, I know some specific. I just it's just. Yeah. What's your policy? I don't tattoo or uh, pierce anybody that's pregnant or breastfeeding. Period. Not yeah. worth the risk. Yeah. Even if it, even if your doctor says it's okay, I won't. Yeah. No, nope, not worth the risk. Yeah. Are you or have you been pregnant within the last three months? So. Okay. Sorry, I'm just. Yeah, yeah. Things I'm like, how do we not have that? Okay. So, uh, yeah, and that's one of the questions on on this info page seven. So. You, if you have all those, Sam, all those points, sure do. the list so that we can add them in and maybe um, get our regs a little uh, change with the. Uh, what do you think about the about? air gun? The that too. Are we against that? Yeah. There are some towns know. in the area that they're prohibited in. I was gonna say Provincetown and Lowell. Oh, that's just a couple. Okay. No, they're not allowed. And then in this, in the model regs, it states to, let me find where it says it. Page 25, it talks about ear piercing guns. They must be licensed by the department and must meet the same requirements as a body piercing facility. So it does, it is mentioned in here. Number no, five, yeah, license 13, yep, license requirements, 13.2, 13. 13. number five. Mm -hmm. I think that needs to go in there. It's going to affect one store. I, it's taking business away from them who have done the work to, yeah. you know, do things properly. And just meet facility code anyway. Yeah. Like the paper yeah. store is just, I mean, they have rugs alone. That's gross. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would like to see some more information regarding those guns. Before I go on. Did you get that, Sam? Didn't you say you just had gotten a little information on that? I looked up if they're banned in other towns, and I also have the National Environmental Health Association, their policy statement on ear piercing guns. Yeah. I printed out a couple. I can print out more. I have three. Can I see it? Yeah, you sure can. What's essentially their policy? It kind of just states that it should have the same requirements as, do you want one? Oh, this is the one that, I think I saw this before. This is the one that just says, sure. just says that they got to have a license and they yeah, no, have the same standards as a tattooing. In these models. I mean, a piercing facility, right? In the model code, it says to look up that policy. So that's what I did. And that is what I found. Yeah, but they're not totally against them by any stretch of the imagination. No. I think I'd be personally against them, but I'm fine with it. They have, you know, if it's licensed by us and meets the same requirements, I just, I can't imagine the like paper store retail, meeting the requirements. Yes. I don't think they have and a hand sink on front there. Owners having the same depth of knowledge on pathogens and stuff that these tattooers have. So, I mean, Correct. if they want to still do it and they want to bring someone in, 
uh, I think the thing that, that bothers me is that uh, the gun was the issue. You know, having some safety issues. Yeah. I haven't heard anybody say anything. I don't see anything in here that says the gun has a safety issue. It wasn't the safety, it was also cleanliness. Well, that not safety. being able to write. So it's it's kind cleanliness of is safety. You know, I mean, that's what we're talking about here. And if that's the problem, and if the gun, in fact, has that, and I thought that they were going to try to figure that out and find out if, if people have had problems with the gun in the past and so on and so forth. So they say right here under what you just gave us, uh, is piercings performed with ear piercing guns that cannot be fully sterilized might result in serious infection, tissue damage, and disease transmission. These issues can be exacerbated with untrained staff and unregulated facilities. And this is from the National Environmental Health Association um, from July 2018 policy right, so on ear guns. I just right, personally... So, so if that's the case, yeah. then why would we even allow such a gun? That's, I don't think why don't we, we should. Just, uh, why don't we just... I, I agree. My main thing, too, if, other if than the these safety... These people are saying that there's a problem with the gun. Then uh, now I have some facts that I can make a decision on because I'm not going to take something away from somebody who's been doing these for years. And, and just so you know, they've been doing them a long time. Like oh, yeah. that. My yeah. kids had them done That's with the gun when they were when kids. They've been doing it forever. But if, the, if, if they're saying that there's a problem like that, just in general, then it doesn't matter whether they use them at a tattoo facility or not. So we should just say, well, no guns allowed. In general. Um, I, I another think. statement they make in here, which is fully clear, regulation of ear piercing guns across the country. The Food and Drug Administration maintains a position that ear piercing devices should be restricted to prescription dispensing, which means they cannot be used by people without medical training. Well, there you go. Right. So, so and, and yeah, if you look, so. there's even more. <laughs> yeah, it's so that's the way to deal with it. I mean. <laughs> Excuse me, Sam. What was that? No, I just said it is pretty long. There's a lot of information in it. Yes, yeah. there is. There yeah. is. And maybe we could um, attach this to show if anybody just so that this stays as part of today's yep. meeting so that if anyone wants to look back at why we made this decision, that we can reference this article, please. Well, we're, just, we're not voting on the whole thing right now no. anyway. We're just adding it yeah. to... Mm -hmm. To, uh, at some point, we're going to have a hearing of all the th changes, right. and then we'll vote yeah. on mm -hmm. it. So the recommendations so far today, if we relook at the regs, would be how many apprentices per um, practitioner, mm -hmm. and whether that's one per practitioner, we can depend on how many. Um, <clears throat> the, the prohibitions of the um, eyeball piercings and ear gun prohibitions, and in, in adding informed consent, and maybe addition about not working on pregnant. Yeah, and, I don't understand that we don't yes. have that in our regulations. Um, I think it was an oversight, I think. Well, basically taking the, the informed consent section that's in um, these model. I, I just, I think they're great. They ask specific questions. Are, we have, we're not super comprehensive in our regulations about that. So. And, maybe and a lot of the shops probably right, like just saying you have two page sheets and stuff, so. And then the ear gun. Any other questions, Sam? No? Anyone no. else? Any other comments? All right, so we will to continue that. The yes, do we need a motion to? Yes, no. 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 We just will continue it. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue it. We'll continue it. No to be thank you. I will see you all next month. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you guys all. See Good you luck on weekend. your weekend. Thank you so much. Um, and we are now go back to Sienna. Oh, yeah. Right yep. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. So we're back to a discussion of possible vote on Sienna Silver or Siller uh, body art practitioner permit. And I think your owner is here. Is with Come, you. Come on. Yeah. Pull a chair up. Would you like to so present yourself and hi so i'm liz i'm the owner of dust till dawn tattoo studio um i've been tattooing and piercing for almost eight years now and we've been open for almost two so that's exciting this is sienna 
Um, I've been tattooing her for a few years now as well. So that's how we know each other. And she has like a huge interest in piercing. She always has. And I think she's really um, kind of perfect for the job. And so you're looking to have her as a piercing apprentice to learn piercing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have any other any other uh, practitioners? Uh, I mean, uh, underneath you, you how many? Uh, so right now we have technically two, but they're both supposed to be becoming tattoo artists like any day. But they're both um, under you now. No piercing apprentices. Okay. All right. Okay. So who's who's under you right now? I have two tattoo apprentices. Two tattoo. And so she's looking to be piercing. Yeah. And um, so she has two under this her now. This is body art. Correct. Pretty much zero, though. This is body art. Right. It was published right. body art. This is yeah. piercing. Shh. Um, I have regs do not state as of right. Do I reg state? It's one to one, to one as of right now. It's just right. the permit. That's so how it's listed when they apply. The third one, right? Yeah, so the question is, you have two. Am I incorrect that everybody now is only allowed one, or we don't have that clarified? As far as I knew, we didn't have that clarified. Clarified. Oh, let's look back. Let's look that would be in our updated regs. Okay. But I don't know if we have a copy of our actual current regs. Because aren't these revised as well? These are the ones that, that are in your packet right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that Patrick has been revising. You'll see them highlighted as we've been going along. Mm -hmm. All right. The ones that are in your books. Are the original ones that and that's the only thing we can use because we haven't right because these are yet. not have not been voted on okay. yes right. and we have up until now well, it was not been clarified how many you can have okay Correct. so that's coming okay so we're, we're okay. looking at regulations so that every practitioner can only have one person under them in training any master what about those mm -hmm. what do we think about Piercer versus tattooer. Are you guys saying it's only one to one? That probably has well, to get that, clarified. That has to be clarified yeah, in the new how can you want I, both? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And if they're working at the same time, it's hard to oversee two people if they're working at the same time. Yeah. That's something we'll have to clarify. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I don't see the problem if it's one tattooer and then one piercer. Then what if then they go for another? I don't know. It gets a little sticky. Mm -hmm. But you, you don't have any piercers now at the shop? Just myself. Just you, yeah. Um, do you have any comments on it, Sam? I do not. I think as our regs stand right now, there she should be fine. Okay. And, and her other paperwork. apprentices should be moving up. Okay. I have to look through the information a little bit. Okay. And I, her paperwork is all, I mean, it looks like it was together. Is, yeah. um, one thing that we have talked about at length is that any um, apprentice is not working on their own without the uh, practitioner there with you, teaching you. Um, because we don't want you, you know, that, that's, that's part of it, is that you're going to be learning. So, um, do I, does anyone else have any comments? No, well, I think we're... We are where we are. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, so motion to approve uh, Sienna Seiler body art practitioner. Comment? Second. Okay. And Particularly we'll for piercing. We don't have that separation. For, yeah. for piercing. Piercing. Yeah. Uh, roll call vote. Julie well, Norton, this yes. is for art, right? Not for piercing. Well, so this we is for piercing. Just, In the regs, is it separated out right now? We have, it's not, we, it really, the old ones weren't separated, right? right? They, they're not separated clearly. Really? They're so it's separate. all one? Yeah. It's all one with talking about the differences, oh, but it's boy, not clear. That. That's okay. why we're fixing yeah, it. Yeah, right. Okay. That's mm -hmm. fine. And all right, yeah. we'll call vote. Yeah, Patrick Chopin, I guess. And Amy Vigan. Yeah. That's so, just um, awful. Good luck.
Thank you guys Thanks so much. Thanks for coming down. It's I don't think that's a regular, you know, that's not something <coughs> in our regs that says that the master needs to come, but I just think it's good practice. Uh, and everyone always has in the past. I've never had a... Had it yeah. for the last two apprentices, and I wasn't oh, tattooing I, at the moment. So yeah. That's why I didn't come Okay. Oh. Well, well, I generally down. think for apprentice, for apprentice you're their oversight, you're, you're paying attention to what they're doing, um, so it's always nice to hear where, where you're coming from. Um, I think it makes sense. Yep. Um, so congratulations and, and good luck, and um, look up for the new regs that are, we've been talking about this for a while, but they are coming. Um, there'll be a few changes. So. Mm -hmm. You know when they'll be out so I can stop by. Um, I'll okay. inform you. I'll drop yeah. them off to every tattoo shop. Yeah. 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 So you'll get one. Great. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you. Can you call me tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we were all just here last week. This uh, health agents report. Probably anything. Nothing new. It was last week. <laughs> and the same with infectious disease or medical report. There's really or COVID's on the rise. The mosquitoes I haven't heard in the past week. Anything new from last week? There's still any calls recently yeah, in the past week. Anything new? Uh, winter is coming. We're going to be seeing more flu coming up. And get your flu shots. Get your COVID shots. If you're over 60, RSV. Um, and then uh, any announcements, anyone? I think the next will be looking what our next meeting is too which I think we talked about last visit, mm -hmm. which is um, we had changed it around because McDonald, Patrick McDonald, uh, cannot, it will be here, and I will be away on the 16th. So we talked last about doing it on the 23rd, and then we should be on our regular routine in November. Say what date is it? I uh, would like to 23rd? do the 23rd, yeah, the 23rd correct. 23rd is fine. Nope. At 5, right? At 5. Yeah. Um, great. Um, then approval of meeting minutes from September 25th. And approval of the September 25th, 2024 meeting minutes. Second. Second. Um, Patrick Chopiano, yes. Julian Morton, yes. And Amy Vigat, yes. Is there any file you out of business? I don't think so, right? We'll move the journey. Move the document. Julian Morton, yes. Amy Vigat, yes. Patrick Chopiano, yes. Said, no. So. So we'll hopefully next time we can look and we've, I know we've gone through them many times. We're separating out, yeah. So piercing and all that would be good. So, well set.